My father died. And I never really knew him. I never really knew him. My mother died a couple of years before that. When my mother died, I never knew her. I never knew the real her. But my father was there to help me. So I tied him to a chair and spent several hours interviewing him to find out what had my mother's life been about? What had she been about? Not the image I had of mum, that caricature that we all present to our children, but the real woman. When she was 18 years old, my mother, my father, were living with my grandparents, four adults. My mother had six siblings, so there's another six. Ten people in a Glasgow tenement with one bedroom. I never knew how tough it was. At that age of 18, my mother had her first child, a son, Wee Wally. <laughs> Wee Wally was born with spina bifida. The doctor said, He's got three years. Can you imagine the impact? My mother was 19 when she gave birth in Felixstowe in England, in an army quarter, to her first daughter with spina bifida. Again, the doctors said, three years. About one year later, no, two years later, I tell a lie. Two years later, my brother, Wee Wally, died. Exactly three years old. Just as the doctors had said. My sister was two years old. One year left. I never knew what my mother had gone through. <clears throat> my father was in the army. When my second sister was born, he was in Singapore. My mother was at home. I never knew. What I want you to understand is that if you write your memoirs, you can show your children who you really are. Not just that caricature, dad or mum, but the real <coughs> person. Now, what do I mean by memoirs? For me, it's just a collection of cameos, a collection of short stories about your experiences, good, bad, indifferent, exciting. What you want to do is trap these short cameos on paper so that they can eventually transform themselves into your memoirs. You don't have to show them to anyone. We're not talking about a bestseller book. We're talking about a collection of stories that your children will find like jewels when you die. Now, how do you go about doing this? Well, I have a method that I use. And what I'm going to do is ask you to use it as well. So, everybody take a blank sheet of paper. And what I'm going to do is help you start your first story. 
I want to break the logjam that stops you from getting this information out. Why do I say logjam? Five years ago, I asked my father to write his memoirs. Four years before he died. He was choked up on the phone when I asked him. Because I think that was the best way, or one of the best ways, I could possibly tell him that I loved him. Because I wanted to know. So he chokes up on the phone, he commits to do it. Over the succeeding four years, I badger him. Once every six months or so. Dad, have you done it? <laughs> yes, I've done a wee bit. How much? I'm at the point where I go to junior school. What? You can do more than that. So he carries on and on and on. Eventually, I find his memoirs after he's died, and he's done one and a half pages, covering 14 years. Every time I read those one and a half pages, I find out more that I never knew. Only these one and a half pages but they're, to me, like jewels. So now, everybody, close your eyes. Think about things that have happened to you. Close your eyes. Think about things that have happened to you in the past. Things you're proud of. Things that excite you. Things that made your day at some point. Things you're ashamed of. Things you're embarrassed by. Just let those thoughts float through your mind for a few minutes. Well, I'm not going to give you that long. When you've thought of something that really stimulates you, raise one finger so that I can see it. Okay. A lot of you have raised your fingers. Now, open your eyes. On this sheet of white paper, Write a few words, a sentence, whatever you need to, to trap that memory onto that piece of paper so that you can come back to it. Please do so now. halfway, two-thirds of the way down the page horizontally to split the paper into two parts. The top piece will be your first story. Hopefully when you leave here and go home today, with a bit of luck, I'll have stimulated you to want to write it down. The bottom half is your list of other memories. You will find that when you write a story, it will stimulate in you a whole bunch of other thoughts. Things will pop into your mind that relate to that story or that it stimulates other memories. Write those down as a list, just as a list. These are your to-dos, your table of contents, your index into your past. When you've written the first story, on the top right hand corner of the paper, put the date of that event approximately. Which year, which month, which decade? Doesn't matter. Just get some sense for the time. When you write your second story, do the same. Put each story into a ring binder. Put them in the order of those dates. Over time, the stories will start to order themselves into your chronology, your memoirs, in that kind of sense. That way, you get to write your memoirs without, like Dad, getting stuck at 14 years old because something he didn't want to write about was in his mind. Something he couldn't remember was blocking it. That doesn't matter. The chronology is almost irrelevant. 
The importance is the stories that express who you are, what you experienced. The order in which they took place doesn't matter. The magic is in the words, the story you're portraying. Those cameos of your history. 